Hey everybody, Professor Doom here once again, and this is the video that I spoke to you guys about in my last video, where I was going to use some layman devices to explain to you all some interesting geological events that we are going through right now, but it's also, I do believe, going to explain to you all about underwater civilizations that have disappeared from the face of the earth and away from the eyes of mankind. We have found underwater uh, cities, uh, Yokoguni, Dwarka, and other locations that now find themselves deep underwater. But how exactly did the water level rise to cover up the cities? Well, to best explain this and the, uh, the devices that I'm going to use, well, I'll just say it like this. What does an egg, what does a hot air balloon and what does a half empty water bottle all have in common? That's what we're going to look at. And that's the devices that I'm going to use to best explain to you exactly what's going on. Trust me, I think you're going to find this very interesting. So what sparked this this idea that I had to explain this to you. So I was, uh, do you guys remember the earthquake, uh, the, the, the 6.9, 7.0 that struck the Philippines? And what I was doing is, is I was looking at some patterns that have to do with the tectonic plates. And I was thinking that within the next two weeks or so from the time that those earthquakes took place in Philippines, that we would most likely see some kind of earthquake in South America. Now, before I even had seen Dutch Sense's uh, video and you guys were telling me, oh, well, that's what Dutch Sense said at uh, Venezuela. Well, I actually am thinking that it's not on that side of South America. I'm actually putting this more in the... Peruvian, the Chilean, or the Argentinian air area. I will explain to you how I got there. But I couldn't figure out exactly how I was going to explain it to you. But then I started to see some very interesting patterns. And then it made me realize, wait a minute. This explains Dwarka. This explains places like Yokoguni or some of the other underwater cities that are now deep underwater. But I also noticed something else that was very interesting that would help bolster my position that America, North America, is the lost continent of Atlantis. Do you know what is interesting, guys? So when I came out with this video, there was all kinds of people talking about, well, they found Atlantis. It was it's found in this anomaly was found in uh, um, uh, the Sahara Desert. Do you guys notice how one of the greatest finds of mankind's history and no one has even talked about it again? Because you know why? Because it wasn't. It was not the lost continent of Atlantis that was discovered in the Sahara. It is interesting that you will find here are the facts. One, Plato and Salon explain. And Plato says that he took his information from Salon, that Salon got it from the Egyptians, that Atlantis was through out into the waters past the Straits of Gibraltar and between the pillars of Hercules out into the waters. Do you know what is interesting folks? We have evidence that the Egyptians 
made it to the United States. We also have evidence that Atlantis was o- overcome with water. We have evidence that the United States had waters over the continent of the United States. We also had an ice age. We had waters in the Grand Canyon because we find Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon telling us that the Egyptians somehow sailed through these locations. We also have different lakes around the United States that have salt water content in them. The Great Salt Lake of uh, Utah, the Salton Sea in California. These are just to name a couple. What other evidence do we have that the United States, or at least North America, even into Mexico, was indeed Atlantis? Well, here's a couple of interesting things is you have the serpent mound in Ohio that is so huge that really you can only uh, make out the detail of what it really is from the air. And we have all kinds of Native American legends about uh, giants, uh, 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 the, The legend of Paul Bunyan also. But the other interesting thing is, is the Aztecs claim that they started out from up north and made their way into Mexico and the land where they came from up in the United States was called Asitlan. And... Another name for the serpent god, Quetzalcoatl, was Amaru, and it was called Amaruka, the land of the god Quetzalcoatl, or the land of the god of Amaru. This is where the true name of the United States came from. America came from the serpent god, Quetzalcoatl. Why is all of this important? Because we're going to see how the geological changes over the years have created a once continent that was overrun with water. And now the water receded. As you can see, the Grand Canyon, we have mountains that have um, uh, 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 sea, sea mollusks and, or whatever the hell, heck they are, seashells and all this other stuff in mountain ranges in the United States telling us that there were water levels that were that high. That high. Why was there an ice age? Why now do we find that there are volcanoes going off and earthquakes in the thousands. We haven't seen this type of anomalous uh, activity since I've been keeping track of this stuff. And I started keeping track of this particular stuff. I had other interests, but I kept uh, my my eye on this kind of stuff since 2013. And I've never seen earthquakes this massive and this frequent ever until the past couple of years. And the volcanoes going off? Well, this is where we're going to talk about the egg and the half-empty bottle of water and the hot air balloon. But first, let's take a look at a video that I did explaining to you all, and lest I forget, I want you to think about this as well. Do you remember how there were Spanish conquistadors that were trekking towards the United States because they heard all of these grandiose stories about some magical city called El Dorado that was just full of gold. Do you know why? Because they already knew that the Americas and uh, sorry about that, everybody. I apologize. But they already knew what they were looking for. They knew where it was at. And 
that was because there were all re- – take a look at the Vikings, for instance. Did the Vikings make it, their way into uh, the Americas? Many, many hundreds of years before – well, at least a hundred or so years before Christopher Columbus – why were there Native Americans talking about that there were other tribes that were giants and they were cannibals? Well, let's take a look at this evidence and then we're going to get into the geological changes. This is the video I did about the true location of Atlantis. Both in Europe, over here to North America, and back again. I mean, long before Columbus, right? That's what they say. When I was in Scotland, here, settlement. I originally thought that the Aztecs started in Mexico City and went north, Mm -hmm. and you're saying that she started somewhere in the north and then ended up in Mexico City. Is that correct? The basic story is that they uh, came from somewhere in the north and a place called Aztlan. Aztlan, the name of the Aztecs' mythical homeland, has a couple of possible meanings. Place of herons or place of whiteness. According to legend, the Aztecs' ancestors lived in Aztlan until their god, Huitzli Lapochtli, told them to head south until they saw an eagle on top of a cactus devouring a snake. The eagle eating the snake or the serpent. I mean, I've seen that imagery before. Yeah, no, and the reason you have, and most people have also, is that in the Mexican flag, Uh, you have that symbolism. Uh, There's the eagle, Mm -hmm. the serpent, and the the cactus. Now, this particular map has that imagery also. Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah. Up, not only that, it's laid out exactly like the mound site here with the spiral mound on one end and the square mound one on the other. Georgia? This mound, United the Creek States. Indians said, this is where they perform their snake dance. Mm-hmm. And so they marched in procession around the mound until they reached the top for their ceremony. There was also Lake Okeechobee. Now, when the Spanish came to Lake Okeechobee, they found three people living around that lake, the Maya Imi, the Mayaka, and the Maya Yuaki. So three people. Ah, so not only were the Aztecs in North America at first, but so were the Mayans. And isn't it interesting if their starting point was up north, Asitlan, the place of whiteness? And uh, so where exactly did the technology come from for them to build pyramids? Huh. So now let's take a look at the evidence of elongated skulls in North America. Elongated technology. But Atlantis was ultimately destroyed by a terrible cataclysm. And according to some researchers, the story of its destruction is strikingly similar to Native American traditions detailing the end of the Third World. The Hopi and other Pueblo Indians tell us that their devastating cataclysm was due to human greed and wandering away from the the spiritual truths of our creator. What's interesting about this is that this idea is echoed in Plato's story of the destruction of Atlantis. The Atlanteans were also created by gods. As soon as humanity wandered off into materialism, that's when Atlantis was destroyed by water perfect correspondence with what the Hopi said happened at the end of the third world. Could there be a connection between the ancient like this thing? Covered head? Yep. And you have this in Chichen Itza as well. Exactly. Wow. Are there any other sites that might uh, tie into what we're looking at here? Absolutely. Just a few hours from here, there's a site called Okamulgi. They found an elite burial that showed cranial deformation, a known technique in the Maya world that they also use on their elites. Cranial deformation is a procedure they did at birth where they placed the, the child on a flattened board, placed another board on his head, which forced 
the, the skull to grow in a certain shape, which gave them sort of a, a flattened appearance to the forehead. With everything I've seen so far, how come nobody knows about this? People have been writing in the literature, the archaeological literature, about this connection for 150 years, but it has become a taboo subject. I'm continually amazed. I go on in this video to speak about the Smithsonian's uh, intentional uh, covering up of giant bones that they have taken into their custody, never to be seen again. And as you saw right there in that report, there have been cranial deformation practices here in North America that they were replicating exactly what they saw. And just like the tribe of Borneo back in the 50s that never, never made contact with mankind. And the very first time that they made contact with mankind and man was these missionaries were trying to teach them about God. What the missionaries find out after they left and then came back to revisit is that the tribal people actually created effigies of the missionaries as being like gods that came out of the sky in their airplane. So my whole point is, is that when people tend to make contact with an outer worldly being, Somebody with elongated skulls, think of uh, Akhenaten, think of Nefertiti, think of the, uh, the Paracan skulls. Well, as we've already seen all around the world in Africa and in other places, that these people would board the skull because they were attempting to replicate what they saw. You think about some of the pyramids that we see, and we think that, that like the Pyramid of Zoser is the first pyramid, and then the pyramids of Giza, uh, Khufu, Khafre, whatever, if you think about these pyramids and you go, well, look, this one over here, Zoser must have been the first one, and they learned how to make it better after that. Well, if you notice, there was attempts to replicate the pyramids, the, the, the great pyramids, after the fact, and they couldn't replicate it, leading me to believe that just like uh, Mr. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, I can't remember the geologist that was able to determine that the Sphinx and the pyramids were thousands upon thousands of years older than what we were being led to believe because of the water erosion evidence. Okay. Water erosion evidence. North America was covered with water. What are we seeing going on right now? Let me show you the map. And then let me explain to you with the devices that I mentioned earlier. And then I'm going to show you why also the map tells us that North America is indeed the lost continent of Atlantis. Let's take a look at this. So taking into account the, uh, the, the hypothesis, it's not even really hypothesis when you think about it, Pangea, when you take the continents and you squeeze them together or, or when the earth contracts or when it was in its contracted state, the continents were much closer together. Now, if you, and this is just my opinion, North America, if you look here at this tip, this tip looks like it could fit right in here. 
making North America much closer to the pillars of Hercules and the Straits of Gibraltar, leading me to believe with all the other evidence that I've already showed you that indeed North America with its giant legends, with its giant bones remains, with the serpent mound, with the fact that the uh, Aztecs, the Mayans called that Aztlan, the land of whiteness, and the fact that there were Europeans that were sailing and they were looking for the lost city of El Dorado, the city of gold. They knew about the Atlantean legends. They knew where Atlantis was. The Egyptians sailed into the United States through waterways because the land was covered with water, leading me to not only hypothesize that North America is indeed Atlantis, but I'm going to show you now some other interesting things that will help to explain how the water receded and why now everything that's going on and what went on in the past to bring about the water to cover up some of these underwater cities like Dwarka or Yokoguni or some of the other locations that we find deep underwater that defies explanation. How did it sink down below the water? Or was it because the water rose above the cities? Let's take a look at what we see in this map, and then we'll get to our devices. What you will notice, my friends, and let me go like this. I want you to take a look. Oops, not there. I want you to take a look at this right here. You see the earthquakes that are right on this tectonic plate? Okay. Now, whoops, hold on. Let me... Let me do this. And what I want you to notice here, all of the plates right along, let me do this, as you can see here, as you can see here, as you can see on this plate that goes right up here, like so. Okay, now let's keep taking a look at all of the plates. And what you'll notice is, and I'm sure you guys already know this. I, I know that most of you already know that these volcanoes are right on these tectonic plate. And you will see here, take a look at the plate lines going right here. See? All right, and look at all of the earthquake activity here, here, and you will start to see a pattern develop, okay? Let me, let me keep going, and I want to show you, and I'm going to bring you to it. I'm going to bring you to it, and I want to show you this here. All of these earthquakes right there. You want to know what's really special about these earthquakes right here? Let's take a look. Let's get closer. And we'll go. I do believe this is the area that we want. India. Right here. What is this? Oh, Dwarka, is it? Look at all of these in these Indian area. Okay. Now, what you'll notice is, is that there is a plate right here. See that plate? Okay. Whoops. Do you see that? And all of, here, let's get this, get this a little closer here. And you guys will see it's either on, look at, look at the, look at here. This was the Philippine line here. 
Okay. You see the line right here? See that? And you see the earthquakes are taking place on all tectonic plates. Either the, the, the volcanoes are on tectonic plates or the earthquakes are on tectonic plates, except, and it's not really an except, is it? This India plate where Dwarka, the underwater city is, there's a plate that goes right into India and underneath. And as you will see, all of these earthquakes right here and here. And let's take a look and see how far back it goes. Let's go back to the last week. Look at this whole area. And you'll see this whole plate right here. Right there. Right where Dwarka once, once was above water. Okay? Or, uh, I'm sorry, over here. Right there. Now, as you'll see, Dwarka area is right there close to that fault line, this, this tectonic plate, oops, hold on, God dang it. Let me shut, sorry about that, but I want to be, I want you guys to understand where I'm gonna be coming from. Oh, well, you're not gonna understand it with that. So just a few more that I want to show you there Volcano there, earthquake there, earthquakes there, earthquakes on that tectonic plate there, all over here, you can see it. Now, I could not for the life of me figure out something until I saw this today while I was at work. Let me show you the egg. Well, I took this picture at work today because what I was noticing is when I boil the eggs at work, um, what you'll notice is, is that when the interior of the egg, or shall I say the earth, what you'll notice is, is that the weakest part of the egg will split apart because of the expansion of the interior of the egg splits the shell. And as you can see, these, the tectonic plate of the egg, get it what I'm saying, the fault line can be seen in the egg before you boil it. So, what are we seeing going on right now with our Earth? We are seeing that we have tectonic plates or fault lines, just like we see in this egg. And what we're seeing is, is that the interior of the Earth is heating up and volcanoes are erupting. And what you'll notice is, is that there are earthquakes all up and down our tectonic plate lines, meaning that our earth, just like a hot air balloon, is expanding. If it expands, the plates come apart. If the earth expands, that means you've created more area. If you create more area, that means that the water levels drop. And that also means that at one time, our earth was so cool and contracted that when it was so contracted so far that the water levels rose 
above certain continents. But I'm going to show you the water bottle as a perfect device to show you what happened to places like Yokoguni and to Dwarka and to other locations that are find themselves underwater. Because when the earth contracted, meaning that it cooled down, and all of, you see, because we already know that, that Pangea had split it apart. But we also know that when the earth contracts, what happens? The water levels rise. How does this work? Let me show you. Though we can't use the water bottle in the form of that the water would be on the outside of the bottle like it would be on the earth. But what we can do is we can imagine that the bottle right now is in its uh, expanded stage. Now, what I want to do is I want you to experiment and I want you to take that water bottle and I want you to contract it. What happens? And let me show you. Whoops, not like that, though. Now, hopefully this is running again. Sorry about that, everybody. I want you to imagine that 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 line right there that we see that we've put on the bottle is the landmass where Dwarka was right there at about close to India. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to contract the bottle back and squeeze it. As it contracts, the water level rises and covers the landmass where Dwarka was. When the earth starts to heat up, and as the plates start to expand. And that's why they've been so worried about the Juan de Fuca plate over there on the side of the state of Washington. This is why people like, what's his name? Uh, Edgar Casey was talking about how the state of California was going to fall off of the rest of North America because it's not even really attached to the North American continental shelf. Do you guys understand that as this starts, con uh, 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 not contracting, but as it is expanding because of the heat, and because of these land masses now causing uh, the expansion, causing earthquakes. And what we're seeing is, is many more severe earthquakes. And we're seeing them all right there on the tectonic plates. As I showed you, well, what do you expect is going to happen for places like the Madrid fault line or to the San Andreas fault line? And isn't it interesting that we've been seeing these naval maps showing us what it would look like if North American uh, 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 coastal areas would be underwater? Well, that's because of these fault lines breaking off the landmass and sliding into the water. Because of the expansion, we know that if you contract, the water level rises. That's why all of these cities are found underwater. That is my opinion. That is what all the evidence is showing me. You take a hot air balloon and you fill it full of hot air. Well, what do we have going on inside the earth right now? Heat. What does heat do? Heat expands. The only release that this heat has right now is these volcanoes. And boy, a lot of them seem to be right on these 
tectonic plate lines right where the heat is escaping from the interior in uh, underneath the tectonic plate regions. That's where it has to escape. Well, it seems as the heat's escaping with the, uh, the these volcanoes, well, you also see that with the movements of these tectonic plates, there are earthquakes. To me, that means that the earth is expanding. If the earth expands, the water levels drop. If the water levels drop, you know, here's another thing. You know what? You guys understand what I'm talking about. I'm sure you do. It makes sense. But you know what else makes sense when you think about it? You know, all of this push for a global warming and it's all mankind's fault. And we know that's not true. How do we know that's not true? Because this earth has went through these cycles every so many thousand years. There's an ice age. It heats up because there is a force out there that is causing gravitational disturbance on this planet, heating up our interior. And it has been doing it in cycles for many thousands of years. And I will venture to say that we have been in at an expansing, uh, uh, expansion uh, uh, for many thousands of years now, probably shortly after the Ice Age, and did you, so guess what? You know, wh how, what did they talk about these uh, lost cities of Dwarka, Yokoguni, and others being underwater? How many thousands upon thousands of years old did they say these cities are? And isn't it interesting that you have freaking maps, Pier the Turkish Admiral Piri Reis, has maps that he got from many hundreds, if not thousands of years older, showing that Atlantis, not Atlantis, Antarctica, did not have ice on that continent. Didn't have ice on it. How is that possible? How could they have known what the continent looked like, or at least the people that they got the information from that created their maps before even this Turkish admiral did so in the 1500s. There were maps in existence. Are you telling me this? Are, is this? Is this even possible? That there were freaking maps depicting a continent without ice? Well, because that was in a state of its it, it, it definitely, when you have a planet that is absolutely cool, okay, meaning there's no heat uh, on the interior of the planet, what do you expect you're going to see on the exterior of the planet? Are you expecting to see an ice age? Are you ex expecting to see snow? Are you expecting to see, oh, nice green, uh, everything's kumbaya, and you know what, people are existing. But now all of a sudden you have all of these governmental and these these entities, well, World Economic Forum, United Nations. Oh my God, there's a climate crisis, and and it's all your guys' fault, and we got to we got to depopulate you. We got to do this. We got to do that because you, oh cows. Planes, cars, you're all causing global warming when, guess what, folks? What the hell is causing these volcanoes to go off then? It sure in the hell wasn't us that caused that. It sure ain't the hell us that's making these tectonic plates rock and roll with earthquakes. But I think they did know that this was coming. And... Now they're using this against us to their advantage. Well, hopefully this video made sense to you all.
And I hope the layman's terms devices that I have used will explain to you. Now, before I forget, you may be asking, well, if this is represented on this water bottle of a continental piece right there of Dwarka, and if you contract the earth in its contracted state, and the water level rises and covers up this lost city Dwarka, or we can say this is Yokoguni. Well, what about the other continents? Well, you got to remember, there is science that has went and found that there was global floods all over this planet. And do you know what's interesting? Is that if you right now, a hundred years from this date, and we look at all of the floods that have been going on right now, right now, and if we were to do digs where let's say there was no, no structures or anything, and if we were to dig down and look at the strata from this moment here, but a hundred years in the future, and we would see that there was floods going on all over the earth and they were happening at the same time. New York, Libya, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, all have been going on this year. If you dig down in the strata a hundred years from now and look at the, our past to this moment, you will see that the evidence of floods all over the earth happened right now. Can you imagine what it looked like thousands of years ago in its flood time? What we're seeing is all linked together, folks. The floods, the earthquakes, the volcanoes, the landslides, the uh, the wave like the wave like uh, uh, activity that we're seeing, high waves, everything. The water is being uh, uh, is being affected by all of this, and the floods, hurricanes, mass. Hur I know, I know, and they may also not only be creating some of these hurricanes, but may be directing them to cause things what they want them to cause. Those are the possibilities that exist. And the information that I share with you is my own personal opinion and the best way that I thought that I could express that opinion to you. Thanks, everybody.